Hi guys, it's Claris. Happy Sunday. I uh, hope you guys are ready for another session of painting today. Um, unfortunately, uh, because I had a prior engagement today, I had to make this another premiere, but I'm sure you guys will enjoy this just as much. Feel free to uh, post any comments or questions that you may have in the chat or in the comments below. Um, and I can definitely get back to you uh, when I get to them. So um, just to recap, we are going to be doing our fall roses today. And we are going to be doing a nice composition with some eucalyptus leaves and some tiny florals to kind of um, enhance the whole uh, setting or composition, floral composition. So let's begin. Just to give you a recap, if you haven't checked out this week's tutorial, you should. It was on the roses right there. Um, I've listed the colors that I used. So we're using the yellow ochre. Oops, there's a piece of hair. The yellow ochre, the carmine, red, uh, violet, um, greenish yellow, yellowish green, and I believe this is either, you can either use the sepia or raw sienna. It's like a dark brown. All right, so let's begin. We're going to start off with the, okay, brushes, which is also the um, mop brush in the one and the silver black velvet in the four. And I'm using Canson paper as per usual. Uh, this is the nine by 12 sheet. Today I'm going to be using the whole sheet. So... Yeah, so I have my water ready, I have my paper towel ready, and let's begin. Um, for this composition, let's do um, let's do three of the roses. We'll do we'll do the roses exactly like we did them here, and so you guys get another practice session. Um, so we're gonna do two. We'll do a third, maybe at the top or at the bottom. Let's just see how it goes. I'll try and add a different spin to it as we go along. And as I always mention, um, if you learn something new, uh, you see me doing something, you can follow me, but uh, I would prefer it if you kind of add your own spin and um, placement, like if you wanna place it on the left instead of the right, please go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna start off with the number four to do our little basic C strokes or comma strokes in the center and then we will flesh out from there. So let's start. So I'm gonna be mixing my red, uh, the carmine, and the violet. I'm just gonna do it off to the side or maybe I could just move the sheet of paper so you can see me do it. Uh, so I'm getting some of the violet. I'm gonna mix that on here. And I want a nice potent violet. And I'm actually gonna Mix it on two ends, one here, one there. And then I am going to take the red or the carmine. And I'll mix it on this side. And that'll give me a nice deep purple color. Which I want to make into like a burgundy almost. So there we go, we have that. And then once I have this, I'm gonna go back, get some of the red or carmine and just add that to this and this makes it a nice deep purple kind of like what we got there in the beginning but now it's like just a nice deep purple tiny bit of red in it so i don't want to add too much red in this otherwise it's going to look exactly like this wine color so let's not do that i want to make sure this is nice and dry and we're going to start so i'm going to do my first floral right here and we'll start off with the purple since I have my brush in it already. So exactly like how, I'm gonna twist my paper too just so when it's straight, uh, I have like a different orientation and it's not head on. 
All right, so starting off with our little C strokes. And you want to try and get them close from the middle. And then you, as you go outer, you're getting slightly wider in your distance. Go in and get more color if you need it. Add a couple of more strokes. And I'm keeping them very loose and like detailed at the same time. By detail I mean there's a lot of little lines that I'm creating. And then finally I'm gonna like go a lot out. And then I'll just leave it at that. Now once we have that, I'm gonna go in with my my mop brush and with just water on it. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same exact movements. And the whole point of this is to have the water kind of move and give you your light to dark kind of effect. just like what you're seeing right here. So at this point we're we're making the water move and this is what gives us our nice romantic look and feel. Um, I don't want to add too much to this to the I don't want to make it too big of a floral so I'm just gonna try and dab some of this off. But essentially this is how we create the rose. And now I'm gonna go back in and add more detail with my number four. So getting more of the purple, I'm just gonna go in and add more strokes, literally overlaying on the ones that I've already added. And what you will see is happening is that it kind of does a nice little blend And it's like a nice monochromatic feel. And you'll see that it's adding more detail in some areas as you do this because it's damp. And uh, this is what we want in our loose painting. Now, what I would also encourage is at this time, feel free to like take your, keep your brush handy and like kind of go in whenever you feel like it's necessary to kind of smudge some water. Um, what I'm going to do is add a little bit of the red mixture that we have and I'm just going to add it to the center and I'm just adding a tiny variation and what this does is it's just giving us a tiny variation of the color mix that we have. So I'm just adding it here and there where it is still damp. If it isn't damp, uh, you are not going to get this effect, so please don't do that. Uh, and if you do do that, that's okay, no harm, you're learning. Uh, we all are, we're experimenting. And, uh, and now I'm going to just take the same brush and go straight into the violet itself. And add the exact same movements in the center. Or detail, rather. And I don't want to uh, outline every single petal like I've done um, that 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 I've created on here. I'm just kind of adding it here and there. And once you feel like you're pretty satisfied with how much you have, you can just kind of stop and we can move on to the next floral. I'm just taking this to smoothen out more of the purple. Yeah, there we go. So we have that um, good and ready. Now we can go on to the next one. For the next one, uh, obviously we have the color handy, ready to go. So I'm just getting the color ready to go right here. 
There we go, that nice red deep wine color. And I'll just put my palette to the side here so I'm not reaching over. And uh, yeah, let's start the process of creating this one. So the exact same thing. And dipping the tip of my brush in water. And then once I have that, I don't want to wait too long before I go in with this and just start adding strokes to have the water flow. So it really depends on the water consistency you have uh, with your stuff or with your color. As you can see, some of it is overflowing, so it's clearly like there's a lot of water pooling from the center, so you can just take your paper towel and dab it off. And watercolor is forgiving in that sense. Uh, well, loose watercolor is forgiving in that sense because um, you can kind of own the mistakes and say that it's part of the beauty of that style. All right. All right, so next step is we're going back in with the number four and we're creating more detail or layers rather, like the wet on wet. We want it to be a nice dark color, especially for the center, especially while it is still slightly damp. And then in the outskirts as well, so like it looks like there's shadow and good light. And what I'll do for the outside here is just kind of Trying to do like a fade off as opposed to too much detail. I'm just taking my mop brush and I'm just adding very light strokes. Now I just kind of went into the red and I got some color, but clearly that's too red. So I went back into my palette, got the right color, and went back in. So what I wanna do for the center, I wanna do the exact same thing that I did here. I'm just gonna use more of that purple and add more detail. Remember to leave white space as and where you can. Uh, and that will really help with shadow and just making the, just really making the rose look like a rose. All right, and so I'm gonna let this dry properly and we will move on to the next rose. For this uh, third rose, I wanna do something that looks like, um, I'm gonna use some of the ochre to make this third rose. And let's try and get it at the bottom now that I'm actually doing the, um, now that we've actually done these, so I'm going to get some ochre directly from here. And I will mix some of it onto my palette, just so I have it. And the offset for this color, let's make it the sepia or the dark brown that we have. Let's see how it flows and goes. All right, so exact same thing that we did previously. Gonna add some detail here. Getting some color directly from the ochre.
I'm not trying to make this flower too massively huge, just good enough to kind of be peeking from down under. And then because the um, burgundy rose is still pretty damp, it's giving me a nice mix. I'm just going to take that mix and work with what I have. So we got like a nice little bottom rose. And now I'm going to use some of the dark brown and mix that with my ochre. And get like a nice muted chocolatey kind of brown, which I am then going to proceed to use for the center. But clearly there's too much water, I need more color. So there we go, I'm just getting more color. And then just kind of adding my strokes. And then just going in with my mop brush and just kind of smoothening out some of these areas so it like blends in. And I'm going to let this dry a little bit before I go back in because I think there's a little bit too much water on the center. So we'll leave these roses this way for now. And we're going to go ahead and tackle um, some of the outskirt florals, like the tiny ones. So let's do the tiny ones first. So those ones are done, I believe, with... Uh, I thought I had used the... Ochre, I think I did, yes. Yeah. So a very muted version of the ochre. For some reason it was looking like a cadmium medium. But we're gonna use the ochre and then we're gonna use that burgundy for the center. So I want it I want a very muted muted ochre. And so for these florals, let's do a couple like coming out on this side. I'll do some on this side and some, uh, actually not here because the color would be too close to it. Um, so let's do some, yeah, let's do some over here actually just like we did it there. And let's have it kind of going outward this way. So if we just do some, Actually, I always like doing the stem first, but let's just do the florals first. So I'm just doing some very basic strokes, pushing the color downward, leaving white space in between, or trying to. And I am getting to make my floral, pushing the color down again, keep that in mind. A few strokes, nothing too much. If you feel like there's too much water, take your paper towel, dab away at it and push the color down. Uh, once that's done, taking the same color, do another floral, and let's do one over here. And notice how this one's a lot lighter in color and kind of faded almost. And I'll do one kind of like protruding out here And I'm literally almost like leaving so much white space so that you have like a really pretty light dark kind of effect happening. So if we have these florals here, let's do some poking out this way, just like a, just like buds perhaps. And then I'll do some at the top here. And then I'm leaving it, leaving that that way. Um, now we're uh, we'll do the the stems. So I'm mixing my yellowish green and my brown to get like a nice dark hue or not really depends on the consistency. So there we go, I have like a nice green. 
a green that I like. And using this, I'm just going to, it's like a very fall green. Um, what I didn't do was I didn't add the pink centers right away. So that's okay. We will add it in just as soon as we are done these. So adding the stem to the floral. Just kind of having it going outward. I'm just watering down my green a little. And yeah, so for the stems, I would say kind of use your judgment how you want that to happen. I'm kind of doing it in my own, what I feel is would flow well or look good. And then for the leaves, it's it was the easy ones that we did. So just press down and push the color down. Same thing here. And then I'm actually going to wash off most of the color, just keeping very little amount of green. I'm going to do another one, but it's like super light. And then I'm extending that at the bottom as well because I want some light leaves at the bottom. And that's quite pretty. I like how this is flowing and growing. Just adding a couple here because I don't want to over flood this area. But I do want to have a decent amount of greenery kind of just peeking out. And then just some at this bit here. And you can just fade it off by kind of having just something like that. And then that's like really faded off because it's kind of it kind of has that dry look uh, and there's a lot of white space. So I like that. So I'm just going to leave that as is and then we can kind of tackle the the centers. Uh, so for the centers, like I said, I'm using my number four again. And we're going to use the pre-mixed uh, burgundy that we have. And I'm going to get a bit of it on the tip of my brush. And I'm just going to try and do a couple of lines around the flower and this will enhance the center same thing on this one and then again same thing over here and then that's it just leave it at that and you have those pretty florals um, and then we can have the same ones like this reflecting over here a little bit. Um, and I won't do as much as we have here. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just do it here because I don't want the colors to be too close by and they look very, very close. So getting some of that pre-mixed yellowy color that I have, I'm just going to create a couple over here. These ones, I'll have them kind of, let's do them over here, yeah. So pushing it all down, leaving a lot of white space. You can use a lot of water if you want in terms of making it light and fluffy. 
nothing dark and overpowering like the roses themselves. And just do a couple of buds. Just doing a bud here, maybe two here. And then uh, while this is still damp, let's add some of the purple e pink. Actually, no, let's just keep it standard, just like how we did it previously. Uh, next thing, let's do the green. So I have some of the green mixed up on the side, left over. So I'm just going to use the same green. So adding a stem here. And then just kind of connecting the rest of these a little bit. And because they're still damp, it gives us like a nice blend, sort of. And now I'm going to just add, uh, I'll add another bit going this way. And then I can add some leaves. Or I can add some leaves over here too, so. Adding one there, I'll add another one here. Keep in mind to try and leave white space in between. It just kind of adds something nice to the rest of your florals, I guess. Okay, everything is dried here, so that's fine. I'm just kind of adding a few light strokes to kind of have it just kind of fading off or falling downward. And I'll just add a couple more leaves here. And one peeking out from next to the little buds. And I don't want to add too many leaves at the top of the buds because I want to leave the buds um, is where they are. And just like I said, not overpowering or identical to what we have here. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, and now we can do the centers. Uh, for the centers, I'm adding the exact same burgundy that we used for this rose. And just going to add a couple of lines, leaving that white space that we had initially into the uh, within the these little florals that we've made so I just have two there so that's perfect I don't want to add any more leave it at that <clears throat> um, and now that this has had a chance to sort of dry up um, there's a couple of things that I would do or add add uh, to the roses like this one has dried up and it looks like a lot of it has kind of just clumped up into because notice there's not a lot of white space compared to this one so the way to fix this would be to just take a darker color of this hue and or darker shade of this hue and just uh, give it the little lines so literally it's like the reverse of what we did uh, the second time in the in in this week's video because there were these were two different ways that I showed you to do these um, Yeah, so we I think we should just tackle the roses at the end uh, I will now go into doing the leaves actually before the leaves. Let's do these little florals. They're very light and very dreamy uh, and what I did was I used a blend of the ochre, the yellow ochre, and the purpley pink. Uh, feel free to use the additional purple, that version of the purple mauve, if you wish. So I've mixed some color, and I am going to start off with a little bit of, yeah, a little bit of the yellow ochre and let's do that in this direction I'm going to turn my sheet so it's easier I think this is dried 
no, you know what, let's not chance it. I'm going to do it on this side. So I'm just going to start doing little strokes, just going off in a direction like this. And random, be placed. And as I add these strokes, I'm going to make sure that I dip the tip of my brush into water and continue adding more strokes close to the previous ones so that the water can kind of seep in and we can get a nice blended, faded look. Very simply done. It's all about mastering the water to um, color ratio. Now once I have that shape, I'm going to go in and get a very light version of that purpley pink and I'm just going to start adding it. Clearly that's too much. Let's tap it off. It's too much, uh, too much of the purple. You need a little more water added to it so it's faded more and added. So when it when it's placed, it looks more like a watercolor stain than anything else. Now a lot of the uh, the yellow seems to have dried up already, so we're not getting a nice enough blend, but that's okay because you can always go in and add a bit of extra yellow. And areas that are stubborn like that, just take your paper towel and wipe it off. Don't worry about it, don't give it a second thought. we will be able to fix this. So now I'm going to go back in for that yellow and I'm just going to add some here and there. And every time you get a color, you will all you'll always get a different consistency. Know that. So don't be rough on yourself trying to get uh, the same color or don't let it bring you down if you are not able to get the same hue. Uh, it happens. And this is what makes watercolor really pretty, is that you don't get the same color all the time and it's just like a nice monochromatic effect that you do get. And now once we've done this, just let's get some of that green that we have previously mixed for these. And while it's still damp, let's just try and connect a couple of areas. And this way it'll look like a cute little floral, uh, I don't want to say a hydrangea, it could be any one of those ones that have a lot of little buds. I'm going to use my water to just create some green looking uh, buds here and there, especially while it's still damp. Maybe that'll add something nice to it. Just experimenting here. Um, so feel free to experiment as you go along. Sometimes you might get an idea and you're like, oh my gosh, you should totally try that. Uh, try it because you might end up really liking it and coming up with something that's really cool and pretty. So there we go. So we have that. We can add another one off on this side or maybe just kind of... Yeah, I'm just going to add a uh, version of that over here, but I don't want it to be too symmetrical. So uh, maybe just even a hint of it at the top. So um, exactly like I did it previously, I'm going to get, no, this time I'm going to start off with the pinky color first and then go off into the, um, the ochre. So I want a very, very light version of it, very watered down. Um, and I'm just going to do a couple of strokes. That's it. Uh, then I'm going to get the yellow ochre, mix that in here. Dipping the tip of my brush in water. Because now I'm going to create the same movements, but 
not really getting ad any additional water or sorry color to my brush so I'm just using whatever's on our paper already to create the rest of the florals now I'm getting some of the yellow ochre because I've run out and I'm just gonna add a couple very very light um, at the top getting some of the pink as well I'm gonna add some of that pink at the top too but essentially I like how it's turned out and I don't want it to look too symmetrical like I said previously so I'm gonna let it fade off into like transparent almost white and now we can add the green connecting dots or lines so these ones will be a lot lighter I guess and we don't even need to add too many I guess because it kind of just fades off but I'm just gonna add most of it at the bottom base and there we go and I'll just leave that as is and so this is what it kind of looks like right now and it's looking quite nice now we can just add some greenery and for our greenery uh, let's do the um, the eucalyptus so for the eucalyptus we're adding I'm gonna add a bit of the a bit of a blue to my green that I've mixed up and you can use like an azure blue or uh, Payne's, Payne's gray I believe gives you a nice enough effect and I'm using the number four again because I'm more comfortable with the four and I don't want these to be massively huge so I've mixed some color and we are ready to go so I'm gonna place one happening over here and what I want to do is I it looks fairly dark and I want a fairly light enough version so I'm adding more water to my brush and I'm gonna start off with the top and just too much water you can see it's pooling add oval shapes and the beauty about uh, this leaf I guess is you can have different variations of color to it to just kind of show the shadow but it's like you can even have straight ones super round ones touching the previous leaf uh, and you have full control over the organic shape of it so have fun with it as you're creating these leaves Leave white space if you need to. Uh, what I should have done was added, I should have done smaller leaves at the top and then it gets bigger down because typically that's what it would look like as well. Uh, some of them look like they're like just coming out that way. So I just did one here and you see the shape is very organic. Um, totally dab some of the color off if you feel like it's too much. I'm just adding more here but like notice that it's a lot more watered down than previous and then I'm just adding a couple more and then I'm gonna let it go just I went back got some darker blue and I'm just gently dotting the stem and decided to add one more leaf there and so I'm gonna leave that as is and I love it uh, next place I want to add one let's have this in three places so the next place I want to add one is let's add one down below here and let's just have it going like this and this time we'll do small to big Notice my shapes that I'm using 
keep dipping the tip of your brush into water if you want to add more of a, uh, a monochromatic blue look to these. But the shapes are just, they're so relaxing to do. Eucalyptus leaves are just next level when it comes to watercolor. Like, I find them extremely relaxing to do, but in the back of my mind, I always think I'm a little bit obsessed with getting it to look a certain way. So I stress a little bit and I don't do them as often in my, in my paintings, but yeah, I really should. Like again, very simple, easy to execute and do. I'm just going in with a darker shade of the blue and just adding it to kind of get a nice blend happening and then leave it at that. So we've got two places we have it and let's just do one more. Uh, let's do one on this end here. And so I'm going to get the same color that I pre-mixed. Uh, take some of the green as well. I'm watering it down. I'm just going to create one stem happening right here. So that's clearly too much water. So I'm just getting a little more color happening. But this can also be a lighter version of the others if we don't want it to be too prominent. So I'll leave that up to you if you feel like you want it to be darker or lighter. I'm going to I'm going to kind of go ahead and keep the same darkness or consistency that I have here. And then just leave it that way. So this is what it looks like right now. Really like how it's turned out. Uh, let's add some of the green leaves that we have over here and then we can wrap up. All right so for these leaves I have mixed a combination of my dark brown that I had, the yellowish green and the ochre. So once again I'm doing this whole thing on making sure that most of the tutorials that I do um, use a combination of the like just a few colors so that the elements can kind of really tie in together nicely. And uh, okay, so for the leaves, let's do one happening uh, over here on this end. Um, so let's do one happening right here. And I'm just gonna add, kind of anxious to do this, so I'll add a stem or the vein of it and then do one and then leaving some white space in between. I'm going to do the other and close that off. There we go. We have our nice leaf. Uh, just adding a little more water to my brush. I'm going to add a, another leaf, but like very, very light, almost like a hint. Um, then I will add another one happening right here because this one's still damp so maybe I'll get a nice flow of the green into the um, into the leaf that we do now let's see wish me luck all right so let's just do it flowing this way and then dipping the tip of my brush in water Gonna do the second half of it. So I didn't really do much there, but that's okay. Um, and then we can kind of do another one happening just to the side here. And if you wanna add a darker shade of green or brown to the center, Okay, this is clearly 
more of the uh, yellowish green that I have. I want it to be a darker green or a brown kind of shadow happening here. So, so you have like a two-tone leaf happening. Just adding some to the top and to the side here as well. It just makes the leaves look so much nicer. Something nice to it. Um, where else can we add some? Okay, so I want to add it in one more area. So let's do... I don't have a whole bunch of space, but these are darker leaves. So we could... Yes, right here. Let's do one over here. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to add just some tiny detail um, to this little rose here. Um, by detail I mean like by adding these little tiny leaves. And just kind of making that leaf slightly bigger. Um, and then I'll just do one more off to the side over here. The thing with these brushes is like trying to control and get get the leaves to not be too big. Um, I always struggle with that. I don't know if anyone else does, but uh, it is a struggle for me. Yes, sir, Bob, it is. All right, so I have that happening. So this is what it looks like right now. Let's finish the, um, actually no, let's, what I wanna do is just add some really loose, um, loose and light leaves kind of happening around these florals and maybe in other areas too. And then we will finish off with the roses and we are done. So I'm using the same leftover green that we have and just watering it down a lot. You can add some of the yellow ochre if you want to give it like a more fall kind of hue uh, and lighten it down. Uh, and for these leaves, I'm gonna do something whimsical, kind of like those, but on a more thinner scale. So I did say I want them around here, right? So. Let's do one happening over here. And I'm literally like, these are quick and light. So there's one. Let's do another one. just ever so lightly there. Um, gonna do one. So this is a good opportunity to kind of figure out where you would like to add your leaves to. Like you can kind of follow me or absolutely use your own discretion and add it as and where you see fit. I'm just adding it wherever I see it could use one without kind of overshadowing the rest. I'm gonna add one here. I don't know what I was doing there, but I think I like it, so I will leave it. I have no choice at this point, it's already on paper. Um, yeah, okay, so I think that's good. I will add one peeking this way. Why not? These are light and easy and fun to do. 
fun to do means it can you can easily do them in abundance and then decide oh no I shouldn't have done it it's way too many but uh, once you know that that's half the battle so so that's always nice I'm just adding a couple of hints of these leaves like peeking out from under sort of thing and yeah I think this is a fabulous composition we don't need to do any more we can just finish off with the centers of uh, the flowers and we are done so for this one I'm gonna do a mix of the uh, violet and the red again And I'm going to get a good consistency where it's less water, more color, so that this layer can really make it stand out. And I'm going to go in and add the exact same details that I've been doing for pretty much all the uh, florals. just want to make sure I'm not overlapping. Getting more of that color. Getting slight amount of water on my brush as I very loosely kind of go towards the edges and add more detail. Because I want, the, and the reason I'm adding water as I go outward is so that it gets lighter. And you can see the transition from dark to light. Right? It's happening and it really does make everything pop out a lot more. So once it dries up, you'll actually see the difference. And then just adding a little bit of purple to the damp areas in the center. And then obviously I'll just add it just for these centers as well. And just sporadically on the outskirts. And leave it at that and there you go we have our nice composition of florals based off this week's tutorial so hope you guys like this tutorial thank you for watching um, please do share and let me know in the comments what you guys thought um, send me your images I love seeing them feel free to share this hit the like button subscribe do all that fun stuff if you like this vid video or any of the others that I put out. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate your time this Sunday. And uh, really sorry we couldn't do this live live per se. But I'm glad you were able to get in some painting time. So thanks and uh, have a good Sunday. Bye.